जो नए आने वाले सैमीन के कोश गुजार करना चाहता हूँ कि हाई कोर्ट बार एसोसिएशन ने लेक्चर सीरीज शुरू कर रखी है और आज इसी सिलसिले में लेक्चर नंबर पाँच का इनका किया जा रहा है जो कि हमारी बार के बहुत ही लेजेंड एडवोकेट एस ए महमूद खान सदोजई साहब डिलीवर करेंगे जिनकी तिलमस तिलमसाती शख्सियत से हर वकील खुद ही मुतासर है कानूनी इल्म की बात हो या दीगर अलूम पर महारत आपकी शख्सियत किसी तारफ का मोहताज नहीं और हम पर उम्मीद हैं कि आज का लेक्चर हाई कोर्ट के लेक्चर सीरीज के प्रोग्राम में एक संग मील साबित होगा मैं मुलतमिस हूँ जनाब सदर मोहतरम तलत महमूद जैदी साहब से वो तशरीफ़ लाए और हमारे मेहमान की शख्सियत के हर पहलू पर रोशनी बसमान रहीम दिस इज़ दी फिफ्थ लेक्चर एज यू ऑल पीपल नो कि इसके बाद हमने जब इस लेक्चर सीरीज़ को ख़त्म करना है तो हमने ला मूड्स की तरफ जाना है और उसमें आपके लिए बहुत अट्रैक्शंस मौजूद हैं सब्जेक्ट चूँकि हमने इस लेक्चर सीरीज़ में हाई कोर्ट की प्रैक्टिस को फोकस किया हुआ है तो आज का सब्जेक्ट जो है मैं ये समझता हूँ कि दी मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट सब्जेक्ट है इस लेक्चर सीरीज़ का क्योंकि कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल जो ही के ऊपर ये हाई कोर्ट जो है वो उसकी उसकी तरजीहत होती हैं और आपकी प्रैक्टिस जो है वो नॉर्मली जो है वो इसी जुरस्डिक्शन के इर्द गिर्द घूमती है मैंने बहुत से सीनियर से इस सिलसिले में रबता किया सरदार साहब ने मेहरबानी फरमाई और इस चैलेंज को एक्सेप्ट फरमाया सरदार साहब का तारफ़ कुछ यूँ है कि आपने गोल्डन कॉलेज से 1976 में एम इंग्लिश किया 1978-79 में एसएन लॉ कॉलेज कराची से आपने लॉ ग्रेजुएशन की यूएसए से आपने एलएलएम 1987 में किया आप एजे के यूनिवर्सिटी में एज विजिटिंग प्रोफेसर पढ़ाते रहे और मुस्लिम लॉ कॉलेज में भी आपने नौजवान आने वाले दोस्तों की रहनुमाई की आप वहाँ पढ़ाते रहे और इसके अलावा आप अकाउंटेबिलिटी ब्यूरो में बतौर चीफ प्रोसिक्यूटर भी आपने खदमात अंजाम दी मैं आपसे गुजारिश करूँगा कि सर आप डाइस पे आएँ और जो है इन नौजवान दोस्तों की रहनमाई करना बिस्मिल्लाम लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन दिस इज अ मैटर ऑफ एमेंस प्लेशर दैट मिस्टर तलत महमूद जैदी इज अ पर्सन हु हैज थाट टू टीच द यंग लॉयर्स एवरी ईयर वी होल्ड द इलेक्शन बट बिलीव मी दैट द ऑब्जेक्टिव आर एमलेस देर इज नथिंग कंस्ट्रक्टिव विच कैन बी पुट ऑन टू द ग्राउंड फॉर द वेलफेयर of the young generation so all the credit goes to mr zaidi and his team that they have done something <laughs> secondly let me tell you that the entire human beings are can be easily divided into two categories number one those who are educated by way of a degree diploma or something like that so they can be maximum the people with a certain degrees but there are certain people who are educated though they are not degree holders but their credibility is more than those who might have did their doctorate or ms or mphil or llb or whatever and i without any hesitation i can tell you that mirza asadullah khan ghalib the greatest of the urdu poet was simply fifth class passed and there is the most difficult doctorate phd in urdu literature is mirza ghalib and let us switch over to the english language william shakespeare 
he is the one of the paramount of the English literature for all centuries. But he himself was a stable keeper. Godu ka rakhwala tha, globe theater mein. And that stable keeper, he wrote such a marvelous dramas that once during the Second World War, Mr. Winston Churchill was asked that, Sir, if you have to save something because you are already de defeated, what will you save? And without hesitation, Mr. Churchill said, we will save the work of the Shakespeare. So, if we save the work of the Shakespeare, we can build many England, Londons. But without that, we cannot do anything. So, it is always a pleasure that you must not be a person who knows few things about the law. You should be the person who must have the creative mind and you must have the grip over the other spheres of the knowledge, other department of the knowledge. So, this is the first drop of the rain and I hope that your successor in interest will continue with this marvelous work and that will ultimately upbring the standard of our world. This was something introductory. Young lawyers, let me tell you that this department of law is a fathomless ocean. Nobody could have dived down and found the seabed of this ocean. It is vast. You have chosen to be a lawyer by your own choice. But the second thing is that you must justify your choice by becoming a perfect and a competent person in the arena of the law. And again I will tell you that all the knowledges, all the subjects, they can be con conveniently divided into two parts. It may be natural science or it may be the social science. Law falls within the category of the social science. And there is a difference between these two. All that subject of social sciences, first of all, they create a boundary for themselves and their entire journey is within that parameter. Whereas the natural sciences knows no boundary and they keep on moving. And there are the scientific subjects. If at one stage the science proved that the Copper is the age and it is something which is sufficient, but when they discovered the iron, they discarded it. And now we are in an age where we are talking in terms of thermonuclear energy, that is a solar energy. So meaning by that the natural science has discarded the iron age and they have stepped into the uh, in thermonuclear age. And similarly, other way around, today we believe <coughs> that Homicide is a heinous offense. But this concept was already there in the age of Stone Age that homicide is a heinous offense. So meaning by that the social subjects, they focus themselves on the well-being of a society and the natural subjects, they go for the discovery of the universe. Now, Back, coming back to the law, because it is not a big matter that we discuss the constitution jurisdiction of the High Court, but we have to also look at some aspect, like law. What is the law? First is, is a first and foremost question. And different people have said different things. Like John Austin, you might have read the John Austin, a jurist, in, uh, during your course of studies, that the law is the command of a sovereign and the subjects are bound to obey it. And it was criticized in many ways that if he's the command of a soldier, uh, a sovereign, if he asks that make a cup of tea for me, he's a law. And definitely the answer is no, it is not a law. So every command delivered by a sovereign is not a law. And then there are so many others. Particularly, I will refer to some Stoic philosophers. S-T-O-A-I-C, Stoic. They are the philosophers of the law from the times immemorial. And they had a very clear concept of the law. 
according to them the law is something which has been delivered by allah the almighty the god whatever the name they call and they are very renowned uh, political philosopher jurist thinker his name was christian thomasus according to him the law was written on the heart of the mankind by the fingers of the god and it was followed by another stoic philosopher whose name was saint paul he said that every man made law should conform to the law of nature and if it does not conform it should be discarded outrightly so meaning by that there was an element of morality in the law which was before the stoic philosophers it was a element of imperative theory which is available in the philosophy of the imperativist like john austin and his other fellows and there are the modern laws modern jurists like you might have read john salmon definitely you have read because all of you you are new and he is the one who is taught in the course and if you look at his definition according to him law is set of rules adopted and applied by the state for the administration of justice and it is fulfilled through the practice of the court so this is basically the law aims at welfare of human being and welfare of society as a whole and to bring the pre peace and tranquility within the society and to avoid all those fiascos and anomalies in the reading which can create or frustrate the problem now coming to the jurisdictions now what is the jurisdiction is a question at a late stage we will come to the constitutional jurisdiction but first of all we have to see it is the jurisdiction is something which is conferred upon the courts <clears throat> under the provision of article 175 of the constitution the judicator starts from article 175 for your convenience if you allow me i can simply go through with a few lines of article 175 so first of all it is clear in your mind that what is the jurisdiction because when we talk in term of the constitutional jurisdiction we always aim at pointing out the jurisdiction that where does it lies article 175 lays as under establishment and jurisdiction of courts there shall be supreme court of pakistan a high court for each province and such other court as may be established by the law this is class 1 of article 175 of the constitution that there shall be the establishment of the courts and the two courts are specifically mentioned in article 175 number 1 is the supreme court which is the ultimate court of the country and there is nothing above supreme court that there shall be a supreme court and there shall be the high courts for each province now this is the identification or recognition that there are courts under the provision of the article 175 of the constitution now class what does class b says no court when we start something with the no or in arabic with the law la angrezi wala nahi la la ilaha illallah so we say that we start something with a negative connotation usko manfi nahi no court shall koi bhi court jurisdiction assume nahi kar sakta la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah no god there is but uh, except allah the almighty so this starts article uh, class 2 starts with a negative connotation which lays down no court shall have any jurisdiction save as is or may be conferred on it by the constitution or by or under any other law so meaning that by that first of all this constitution this uh, article has identified the court the adjudicators and then in class 2 it has specifically mentioned that every court shall exercise 
the jurisdiction which has conferred upon it by the constitution itself or by any other law. And clause 3 says the judiciary shall be separated progressively from the executive within 14 years from the commencing day. Many of you do not know that there was a time when the judiciary and executive were moving side by side with each other and they were intermingling, particularly the executive was intermingling in the powers of the judiciary and if there is a matter of a criminal nature and a person is accused of decaity, theft, whatever, except murder, he used to be tried by a magistrate of the Section 30 who used to be an assistant commissioner or magistrate first class. So they used to try it. Constitution's blessing for the first time that the Constitution said that judiciary will be separated from the executive. And perhaps in this long exercise, it ultimately, if I do not... Uh, if I remember pr properly, our Zadisa will guide me. Perhaps it was 94, 95, when finally they were separated and the civil judges were bestowed, were, uh, were given the powers of the magistracy. And this was the time of Mr. Sayyid Sajjad Ali Shah laid his lordship as he then was the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Pakistan. So this class 3 is fulfilled now that judiciary will progressively will be separated from the executive and it has already been done. Now, class 2, a bare perusal, bare reading of the class 2 shows that some uh, instrument like constitution itself or any law will confer the jurisdiction upon the court. And now, if we for the purpose of the criminal law, you have to revert back to the Code of the Criminal Procedure 1898. And it will tell you that I hope that all of you know the difference between a procedural and substantive law. Do you know? If not, I can explain you. No answer means that all of you know. So, this jurisdiction is conferred upon, on the criminal side, this is the Code of Criminal Procedure of 1898, and it confers the jurisdiction, and it defines what is a magistrate, and what is a session judge. A session judge, if you go into the real meaning of the sessions, sessions mean that there are some people, it is not only session, it is sessions, that some people are sitting with a judge, who help the judge, but unfortunately when to go to the court, you will find a single person who is called as a Sessions judge, which is absolutely a wrong connotation. It was like Europe, it was a jury who used to sit with the judge. And in subcontinent, there were the assessors who used to sit with the judges, session judge, and used to help him on question of fact. And question of law was always reserved for the judge. So, we have the sessions judge, but there is no sessions, but only judge who sits and does the job. So, the jurisdiction is conferred upon the sessions judge by the Code of Criminal Procedure 1898. In similar fashion, you will see that the civil courts are bestowed with the jurisdiction of the civil nature and the procedure law is Civil Procedure Code 1908. It will tell you what is the court of first instance, what is the court of appeal, what is the revisional court, what is the other court, and everything on the civil side will be explained by the code of civil procedure. And there are so many laws, substantive laws like Specific Relief Act and the Transfer of Property Act and the Contract Act. And you lawyers, maybe many times unconsciously, you file a suit for specific performance without knowing that this is the specific relief act or knowing by design or without design. So this is the setup which is 
uh, according to the clause 2, is a conferment of the jurisdiction over the courts. Now here the question is, the constitutional jurisdiction. Now, my uh, point, or where I was brought by the Adhisab, that I must explain what is the constitutional jurisdiction. With the, before uh, addressing this question, we must see that what are the other kind of jurisdictions. Number one, it is the original jurisdiction. Original jurisdiction means that a court who decides the matter at first instance, that is called the court of original jurisdiction. Then there is a jurisdiction known as appellate jurisdiction. Appellate jurisdiction means that a court does enjoy the authority of appeal to itself. And it is not enough. There may be the revisional jurisdiction. And again, in uh, Civil Procedure Code and Criminal Procedure Code, these are mentioned. Uh, on one side it is Section 115 and on the other side it is Section 5, uh, 539 and uh, allied sections on the criminal side. So this is a revisional jurisdiction. Now, where the revisional jurisdiction lies, you have revert back to the law itself. If it is a civil matter, you have to revert to the Order 43 of the Code of uh, Civil Procedure, where it tells that where lies the mode of appeal and where it does not lie. So where no, there is no mode of appeal, then the matter is uh, open to the revisional jurisdiction. And then there are the review jurisdictions of the court. What is the review jurisdiction? A review jurisdiction means might, there might have been some mistakes, calculations, or words, or parties, or whatever floats on the surface of the file as a mistake is to be rectified by the court who has delivered a judgment by inviting his attention towards those particular uh, matters where you think that the court has uh, made some error in the name of the party, whatever, or in the sum which has to be decreed or anything. So that is a review jurisdiction. Now these jurisdictions are recognized throughout, like uh, appellate jurisdiction. High court very much enjoys the appellate jurisdiction. But there is another very interesting thing that High Court enjoys the concurrent jurisdiction in the session court at many places. Like if somebody asks you that why Mr. Bhutu was tried by the High Court, then you have to revert back to Court of Criminal Procedure and any Court of Session or High Court. So it has already, it was given an alternative that the High Court enjoys the concurrent jurisdiction with the session courts. So, uh, apart from the other jurisdictions which are conferred upon the High Court, uh, we are talking in terms of the appellate jurisdiction. If you go into the Supreme Court, Supreme Court has a different uh, constitution and it enjoys a different uh, jurisdiction. Firstly, under Article 184, which is the case. Section 60, uh, Article 63. So this is, this is Article 184, Class 3 when the Supreme Court thinks that there is a question of great public importance without prejudice to the provision of Article 199 of the Constitution of 1973, the Supreme Court will take the sumo to action and can decide the matter. It's when class 2 evoke at the if the matter is between the two governments, the judgment of the Supreme Court shall be declaratory. Two governments who identify you, i.e a federal government and a provincial government are the two provincial government. So that is the appellate jurisdiction. And there are five points where uh, you can uh, only file the appeal before the Supreme. That is not my subject today with the permission of the Dishab, so I can skip it. So, but if you want, I can just explain it in a two, three minutes that uh, the, the five elements are number one. If the High Court has convicted some person in original jurisdiction, the appeal shall lie to the Supreme Court. Example, Z.A. Bhutu case, number one. Number two, if the High Court has reversed 
द जजमेंट ऑफ एक्विटल इन टू कन्विक्शन ऑफ अ पर्सन अपील लाइज टू सी डायरेक्ट अपील टू नंबर थ्री इफ द हाई कोर्ट हैज सेंटेंस somebody to the prison for contempt of court the appeal lies to the supreme court if the subject matter of the suit property exceeds 50000 rupees jaise aap likhte hain na ke janabe wala maliye de dawa baghar court fees itna hai if the subject matter of the suit property exceeds 50000 appeal lies to the supreme court and number 5 if the high court issue the certificate that there is a substantial question of law Involved in that particular case, the appeal shall lie to the. In all other cases, it shall be leave to appeal. It may be a criminal appeal, a petition for leave to appeal, or it may be a civil petition for leave to appeal. Now these are the jurisdiction means. Now constitutional jurisdiction. Constitutional jurisdiction means that only that jurisdiction which which has been conferred upon the High Court by virtue of the Constitution. अदर जूरिस्टिक्शन एज आई हैव टोल्ड यू मैंशन इन द क्रिमिनल प्रोसीजर कोड अपील कैसे लगेगी इन अदर लॉज एंड दिस क्लास टू आल्सो सेज के नॉट ओनली द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बट एनी लॉ विच कन्फर्स द पावर अपॉन द कोर्ट्स नाउ आर्टिकल 199 नाइन ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इज समथिंग विच इज विच कैन विच कैन बी कन्वीनियंटली treated as the constitutional jurisdiction of the high court and our crux of today is this constitutional jurisdiction you may call it writ petition writ jurisdiction or a constitutional jurisdiction here in punjab we file writ petition and in sindh they file constitutional petition and matter is the same and the article is the same and there is nothing which is uh, different are which is uh, i mean uh, controvert uh, contro uh, controversial with each other there is nothing so this is a constitutional jurisdiction so as i have mentioned to you that this is article 199 exclusively confirm uh, confers upon the high court the jurisdiction of the constitutional side so it has got uh, three classes in it and i will try to make you understand that what type of the cases where the high court exercises its constitutional jurisdiction first of all i would read article 199 so it may be convenient to you to understand the this particular provision of the law which is the subject matter of our lecture of today 199 jurisdiction of the of high court subject to the constitution a high court may if it is certified that no other adequate remedy is provided by law adequate what is the adequate remedy any remedy which is particularly mentioned in some law कि अगर आप को कोई जनाबे वाला जमीन पे मकान तामीर करना शुरू हो गया है तो देर इज अ एडिक्वेट रेमेडी इन शेप ऑफ आर्डर 39 रूल वन एंड टू सीपीसी दैट यू कैन एड्रेस द कोर्ट एंड से दैट दिस इज आई हैव गॉट एवरीथिंग एंड दिस मैन इज रेजिंग द कंस्ट्रक्शन ओवर माय वॉल और माय लैंड सो दिस इज कॉल्ड द एडिक्वेट रेमेडी or you have to if somebody has dispossess you from his house though you are a tenant but specific relief act section 9 it comes to your help and it is operative against the real owner of the house and the courts are there to get you back the possession and then tell the landlord that he should go into the court of law for the ejectment so they are the adequate remedy but what happens there is when there is no adequate remedy pata nahi आपको ये जो रिट गई माजी का भी पता है या नहीं पता क्योंकि मैं कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन जुरिस्टिक्शन पे हूँ इसका माजी ये था कि इंग्लिश लॉ जब डेवलप होना शुरू हुआ तो उसमें ये हुआ था कि ये जो जनरल लॉज थे दे यूज टू बी प्रैक्टिस बाय द कोर्ट ऑफ द जनरल जुरिस्टिक्शन बट देर वर सर्टन प्रोविजन विच वर नॉट फॉलोइंग इन एनी एम्बिट ऑफ दैट 
and by that the uh, the crown of the england they uh, introduced the chancery courts and the prime minister used to be the chancellor and the writ used to be issued by those chancery courts with modern times those chancery court has been emerged into the regular courts and this power has been given to the high court except one power which is habeas corpus that is concurrently enjoyed by the sessions court as well so so ye ho gaya ab iska jo class a, a hai kehta hai on the application of any aggrieved party make an art directing a person performing within the territorial jurisdiction of the court agar raul pindi bench ki jurisdiction jhelum tak hai na to jhelum tak koi bhi authority chahe wo chakwal mein baithi hui hai अटक में बैठी हुई है या राहुल पिंडी में बैठी हुई है और जो जहाँ से बॉर्डर हमारा इस्लामाबाद हाईकोर्ट के टच करता है उससे इधर उधर बैठी हुई है उसको वो डायरेक्ट कर सकते हैं फंक्शन इन कनेक्शन विद द अफेयर्स ऑफ द फेडरेशन चाहे वो फेडरेशन से मुंसलिक है आ प्रोविंस किसी सूबे से है आ लोकल अथॉरिटी या लोकल गवर्नमेंट लाइक आपकी वासा लोकल गवर्नमेंट है म्यूनसिपल कॉरपोरेशन मेट्रोपोलिटन कॉरपोरेशन ये लोकल गवर्नमेंट्स हैं तो ये इधर इज अटैच विद फेडरेशन आर अ प्रोविंस आर विद अ लोकल गवर्नमेंट टू रिफ्रेन फ्रॉम डूइंग एनीथिंग ही इज नॉट परमिटेड बाय लॉ टू डू इसको हम क्या कहेंगे रेट ऑफ प्रोहिबिशन प्रोहिबिट करना एक एस है वो किसी के घर पे बार बार छापे मार रहा है यू हैव नो चॉइस बट यू विल कम टू द कोर्ट फॉर द अप्रोप्रिएट रेमेडी इन शेप ऑफ द रेट एंड यू विल Uh, in the prayer class you will say in view of above it is most respectfully prayed that a writ of probation may graciously be issued against uh, respondent number fla 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 uh, so as to uh, stop him from doing all the illegal acts so this is a writ of probation where the high court in its original jurisdiction refrains a person from doing any act which is outside the purview of his authority अगेन इसके बाद काम है के बाद आर टू डू एनी थिंग इज रिक्वायर्ड बाई लॉ टू डू नाउ इट इज अनदर काइंड ऑफ अ रेट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल स्टॉप हिम फ्रॉम डूइंग अ थिंग विच इज अ रेट ऑफ अ प्रोवेशन बट अगेन आर टू डू एनी थिंग इज रिक्वायर्ड बाई लॉ टू डू दिस इज द रेट ऑफ मेंडामस एम ए एन डी एम यू एस मेंडामस मेंडामस मीन्स दैट अ पर्सन इज सपोज टू डू अ जॉब एंड अंडर द लॉ he is obliged to execute some job but out of his lethargy and carelessness he is not doing it so the court will always come forward and help you and will direct him to do that particular job which he is uh, under the law bound to do it so that is the writ of mandamus 3 uh, declaring that any act done आर प्रोसीडिंग टेकन विद इन द टेरिटोरियल जो इज अ कंट्री बाई द कोर्ट बाई रीजन ऑफ परफॉर्मिंग फंक्शन इन कनेक्शन विद द अफेयर ऑफ फेडरेशन अ प्रोविंस और अ लोकल अथॉरिटी हैज बीन डन आर टेकन विदाउट लॉफुल अथॉरिटी एंड ई इज ऑफ नो लीगल इफेक्ट यहाँ पे इट स्टार्ट फ्रॉम ड्यूरिंग दैट एनी एक्ट डन आर प्रोसीडिंग टेक मीनिंग बाई दैट द एक्ट इज डन ऑलरेडी some quasi judicial forum has uh, decided something and you don't have a choice of appeal or some adverse action has been taken by the authority against some individual and they have no other choice because it is done already so here comes the writ of certiorari where the courts have the ample power ample power to set at naught that particular order which has already been taken by the authority body corporate individually collectively whatever is the more and it can not only certiorari but it can at the same time suspend the operation of that order which is already in field and which may be harmful to you so now we have seen the three different categories which is probation mandamus and certiorari the writ of habeas corpus here 
since we are here to tell you the constitutional jurisdiction. No doubt this is constitutional jurisdiction as the same is laid down in Article 199. But with the amendment, this writ of habeas corpus has been also been given to the session judges and they enjoy simultaneously with the High Court, directing that a person in custody within the territorial jurisdiction of the court be brought before it so that the court may satisfy itself that he is not being held in custody without lawful authority or in an unlawful manner. Simple. Habeas corpus. What is habeas and what is corpus? Corpus is a body and habeas is placing it somewhere where it is not required. So habeas corpus, these are all Latin terminologies that a person, if he is confined against his wishes, so the court will call on that person, not only that call on person, rather they will call the person responsible for it, they will check and they will examine the person and if they feel that a person is in a police lockup and there is no FIR against him, then they will order to release that person apart from the other proceeding which might go take against the one who has placed him under detention or something like that. So this is habeas carpet. And finally comes the co-warranto, Q-U-O, W-A-R-R-A-N-T-O, warranto. Again Latin, co-warranto, co, what? Warranto is a, uh, warranted. What authority is warranted? Under what authority of law? How did a law permit you? This is the meaning under what authority of law? Now this is how it is. On the application of any agreed person, make an order giving such directions to any person or authority, including any government exercising any power or performing any function in or in relation to and territory within the jurisdiction of that court as may be appropriate for the enforcement of any fundamental rights conferred by chapter 1 of part 2. Okay, when you have a man who is enjoying the authority, first of all, one person is a chairman of NAPRA. Now, it's written that for the NAPRA chairman, first of all, it's necessary to retire from grade 22, it's necessary to be an engineer, a power engineer or electrical engineer. और एक आदमी है जनाब ये वाला वो अपना सियासी आदमी है जिसके कोई है वो क्वालिफिकेशन नहीं है वो लग जाता है उसके खिलाफ एक रेट हो जाती है ये वाह रेट है जिसमें आप को मतासर मतासर फ्रीक नहीं इट इस नॉट नेसेसरी दैट यू शुड बी एग्रीड पर यू कैन चैलेंज इट इन द कैपेसिटी ऑफ द सिटी दर that under what authority of law Mr. XYZ is enjoying the position of a chairman of the NEPRA where there are certain qualifications. Abhi, we have conducted so many cases. A tagged implies reinstatement act and then they introduced that uh, the contractual people will be taken into the service and their services will be regularized. Now, if you look at the law, every law has its own boundaries and no other law can trespass into the boundary of another. When Mr. Khurshid Shah was a minister, he had to do a contract imply. My rights are still running now. It was that the President of the Federal Public Service Commission Ordinance 1977. The correct answer is that the post in connection with the affairs of the Federation shall be uh, duly filled in by the Federal Public Service Commission. Dusre lafzo mein, agar forge mein commission lene ke liye inter-services selection board hai, to civil commission ke liye Federal Public Service Commission tha. Isko pass kiye bagar, you cannot be inducted into the any service of the Federation. So what they did that they got some people from the outside and they inducted them. And again, Civil Servant Act 1973, Section 11b. He says if in case of emergency, a person has been appointed on a particular post, then his case must be sent to the Federal Purposes Commission for regularization or whatsoever. And again, Federal Purposes, if he has 20 years old, then 
तो फेडरल पब्लिक सर्विस कमीशन जो है विल चेक हिम विल इंटरव्यू हिम विल टेस्ट हिम एंड इफ ही फिट्स ही मे टेक हिम सेक्शन 11 बी एंड नहीं तो रिकमेंड ये कर सकती है इफ ही इज फिट फॉर अनदर पोस्ट सो इट विल बी रिकमेंडेड दैट ही मे बी सेंट टू अनदर पोस्ट सो दिस वाज द वायलेशन एंड देयर वर द नंबर ऑफ 19 2019 अप टू 2021 देयर आर 22 जजमेंट्स फ्रॉम द सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑन दिस सब्जेक्ट दे ऑन को वारंटो that what was the authority, under what authority of law you have appointed those people. So, these are the constitutional, I don't know, I, am, I might have taken much of your time, I don't know, uh, that these are the constitutional jurisdictions. And these jurisdictions must be identified in a very clear terms. There should not be any ambiguity in our mind, and we should have a clear-cut pointation that this is a constitutional jurisdiction. This is the original jurisdiction, revisional jurisdiction, review jurisdiction, all that. And I hope that wo shayar ne kaha hai ke andaze bayaan agar che bhoot shokh nahi hai, shayad ke utar jaye tere dil mein meri baat. Thank you very much. Pena question mein khodi kar le ta. Agar jata te. Sir, aam tol pe jurisdiction jab hai indeed invoke karte hai kisi bhi high court. उसमें प्रॉब्लम ये आती है कि प्रिटेशन के तहत हम जो रिट फाइल करते हैं तो वहाँ ऑब्जेक्शन लग जाता है। There are two kind of precedents। मंसूर हिस लॉर्डशिप मंसूर ने शाह की जजमेंट में जिसमें उन्होंने कहा है कि कोई भी हाई कोर्ट वो इन्वोक कर सकती है प्रिटेशन के खिलाफ। लेकिन जब से इस्लामाबाद हाई कोर्ट बनी है, बास जजेस सिंध हाईकोर्ट की लेटेस्ट जजमेंट है 2020-2021 की जिसमें ये लिया गया है ईस्ट वेस्ट एआईआर है जो पुरानी जजमेंट्स हैं उसमें भी यही था कि कोई भी कोर्ट हाईकोर्ट उसको इन्वोक कर सकती है इस बारे में मेरा प्रश्न है वेरी सिंपल आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन ऐसे है कि जब हम रिट जुरिस्टिक्शन या कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल एक सब्सटेंटिव लाव होता है। ये सब्सटेंटिव लाव है। इसका प्रोसीजर कहीं और तयुन किया गया है। इसका प्रोसीजर सीपीसी में तयुन किया गया है। सिविल प्रोसीजर कोड लाव आप रिट को गवर्न करती है, माया करती है प्लेटफॉर्म जिसके ऊपर आपका सब्सटेंटिव लाव चलता है। उसमें कौन है? जहाँ पे आप दावा कहाँ लाव ऑफ रिट्स में आप फेडरेशन को चैलेंज कर रहे हैं फर्ज करें कि जनाब वाला आपने चैलेंज किया जनाब वाला सेक्रेटरी मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ डिफेंस तो यहां पे ऑफिस ऑब्जेक्शन लगाता है कि जी इस्लामाबाद हाई कोर्ट नो द सेक्रेटरी डिफेंस इज सिटिंग राइट बिसाइड यू हियर एट राहुल पिंडी सो मीनिंग बाय दैट द डिफेंडेंट मैंने अभी एक केस इस पे भी किया हुआ है जो पिंडी बेंच में ही है बिकॉज़ द सेक्रेटरी डिफेंस इज हियर now, let us say that there is a grievance of yours regarding Immigration Ordinance 1979. Bureau of Immigration and HRD, a pura department, hai, Human Resource Department. Achha, uska secretary to DG baitta hai Islamabad mein. Uska protector of immigration baitta hai satellite home mein. Usne kisi ko refuse kar di hai, aapki ye court jo hai na, isko jurisdiction hai. Not only the one defendant, but one of the defendant or one of the respondents. Or if you make a protector of immigrant party at satellite on Raval Pindi, this court will automatically assume the jurisdiction. So, this is the moral of the story that when you file a writ, you should have to see that the respondent who is in that place is in that place, within the territorial limits, because in Article 199, the first connotation of the connotation is a territorial limit. If he is here, so you can file the writ. And if the no respondent belongs to that territory, so this court will be a functus officio for that particular case and will be deprived of entertaining the jurisdiction. This is what I have given you. How many departments are there? The Ministry of Defense, the Protector of Immigration, या गवर्नमेंट के और डिपार्टमेंट है आपका रिस्पॉन्डेंट यहाँ होना चाहिए वो इस सीपीसी का प्रोसीजर तो फिर ये कोर्ट जो है ना बाउंड है आई होप आंसर योर क्वेश्चन एनी अदर फॉर बीइंग हियर बिकॉज़ 
Sir, my question is about Article 63A of the Constitution, which has been discussed every corner of the country. And my second question is about the ruling of Punjab Deputy Speaker, which is according to the Constitution or unconstitutional, kindly enlighten us. Don't you think that this falls outside the purview of my lecture? But still, Article 63A, it is disqualification on defection. ये इसकी कनोटेशन ये है मैं नहीं समझ पा रहा कि जो ये मामला चल रहा है इसमें डिस्कवालिफिकेशन ऑन डिफेक्शन डिफेक्शन मीन उसमें क्लास ये जो वो ये कहती है कि इफ ही रिजाइंस हाँ सब बैठे हुए इन्हें पढ़ा होगा तो ये चांद को चिराग या सूरज को चिराग दिखाने वाली बात है इफ आई एम रॉन्ग दे कैन कुरेक्ट मी कि डिफेक्शन है इफ यू रिजाइन आर एफ स्टैंड फ्रॉम वोटिंग टू जो है इफ इट परटेंस टू द वोटिंग टू द प्राइम मिनिस्टर और द चीफ मिनिस्टर एंड नंबर थ्री जो है गालिबन इसमें वो ये है कि जनाब इफ द पार्लियामेंट्री पार्टी वॉन्ट्स यू टू एबस्टैंड फ्रॉम वोटिंग एंड स्टेड यू गो फॉर वोटिंग ये आर्टिकल सिक्सटी थ्री ए का नट चल रही है इसका प्रोसीजर ये है कि अगर कोई डिफेक्शन करेगा तो पार्लियामेंट्री हेड जो है विल राइट टू द चीफ इलेक्शन कमिश्नर और चीफ इलेक्शन कमिश्नर जो है वो उसको नोटिस देगा और सुनेगा और अगर नहीं तो वो उसको डिस्कवालीफाई करेगा फर्ज करें उसके खिलाफ फैसला आ जाता है सिक्सटी थ्री टोटल यही है ये जो इंटरप्रटेशन हो रही है ये मैं समझ नहीं रहा कि ये किस तरह हो रही है आगे ये है कि अगेंस्ट द जजमेंट और द आर्डर ऑफ द चीफ इलेक्शन कमिश्नर द एग्रीव पर्सन विल विल फाइल बिफोर द सुप्रीम कोर्ट अंडर आर्टिकल वन नाइन्टी थ्री वन एटी फोर थ्री and the supreme court will decide the matter within 3 months so this is now question is whether we have to see whether chori shujaat is a parliamentary head or no and who is the parliamentary head you have to see whether he is elected or non elected person to ye this is a criteria but since the case is there so i have nobody to i mean argue on one way or the other on this front this is article 63a and what the speaker has done the deputy speaker uh, i cannot comment upon it till such time that this matter so we can discuss it over a cup of tea but not publicly sir aapne bataya ki supreme court jo hai wo between the government writ petitions under the constitution wo sun sakti hai so my question is whether uh, local government is fall as the government in such uh, repetition actually wo jo article jo hai na 184 supreme court ka usme pehli baat wo likhi without prejudice to the provision of article 190 ke ji wo isko prejudice nahi kar rahi hai balki iske yani not uh, excluding it but in addition to that this is the power and where every government functionary whether he functions for the function for the local government or function for the federation or affairs of the federation or the provincial matters whatever so they are amenable to the jurisdiction of the supreme court and high court sir question ye hai ke jab hum constitutional jurisdiction mein jaate hain high court order for or against to hum ica file karte hain lekin kya agar बिल पर हम 491 में जाते हैं सेशन जज सब के पास और उस ऑर्डर को सेल करते हैं रिट रिस्ट्रिक्शन में तो उस केस में भी हम आई में जा सकते हैं या नहीं जा सकते नहीं जा सकते तो किस वजह से नहीं जा सकते क्योंकि फाइल तो ये भी कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल जो रिस्ट्रिक्शन में हम कर रहे होते हैं रिट में एक सर मजीद क्वेश्चन ये है जो मैटर आज चल रहा है सुप्रीम कोर्ट में क्या उस मैटर को लाहौर हाई कोर्ट भी सुन सकती थी या उसकी कोई खास वजह थी सुप्रीम कोर्ट ही जाने की ये कह रही थोड़ा सा ये जो पहले जो आपका जो पहला क्वेश्चन ये था कि आप ही बी एस कारपस फोर नाइन्टी वन है अब मैं उल्टा आपसे सवाल करता हूँ आप मुझे ये बताइए अगर मैजिस्ट्रेट के पास आप बेल किस ऑफेंस या कौन सी दफा के तहत फाइल करते हैं फोर नाइन्टी सेवन फोर नाइन्टी सेवन आफ्टर अरेस्ट जी जी सेशन के पास सेशन के पास फोर नाइन्टी सेवन भी जाएंगे कंकरेंट रिस्ट्रिक्शन और आई कोर्ट सेम उसमें फोर नाइन्टी सेवन सो फोर नाइन्टी वन ऑलवेज रिमेन द सेम इवन इफ यू आर बिफोर द हाई कोर्ट द बेसिक फंक्शन ऑफ फोर नाइन्टी वन इज वेरी क्लियर सो इट इज दैट वे
सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ योर क्वेश्चन वेदर द लेटर कैन बी स्क्रूटनाइज बाई द गवर्नमेंट मैंने अभी इनके सवाल का जवाब देते हुए ये कहा था कि अगर कोई बंदा डिसक्वालीफाई हो जाए तो आर्टिकल 63 थ्री ये कहता है कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट जाएगा सो मीनिंग बाय द फॉरम ऑफ द हाई कोर्ट इज रूल्ड आउट बाय द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इट्स मजीद मैं आपको पढ़ के भी सुना देता हूँ सो इट मे बी वेरी क्लियर टू यू सिक्सटी थ्री ए डिसक्वालिफिकेशन ऑन ग्राउंड ऑफ डिफेक्शन जो मैंने आपसे अर्ज किया था इफ अ मेंबर ऑफ अ पार्लियामेंट्री पार्लियामेंट्री पार्टी डिफेक्ट डिफेक्ट समझते हैं नुख्स का मतलब नहीं है डिफेक्ट का मतलब है किनारा कशी इख्तियार कर लेना डिफेक्ट ही मे बी ही मे बाई मीन ऑफ अ नोटिस इन राइटिंग एड्रेस टू हिम जरा गौर से सुनते जाइएगा तरह से ठीक क्या क्या एड्रेस टू हिम बाई द हेड ऑफ द पोलिटिकल पार्टी और ओ आर उसको लेटर लिखेगा किसको जो डिफेक्शन कर रहा है और सच अदर पर्सन एज मे बी अथराइज इन दिस बी आर बाई द हेड ऑफ द पोलिटिकल पार्टी बी कॉल्ड अपॉन टू शो कॉज विद इन थोड़ा सा सर मैं आई एम सॉरी इस पे 63 ये की जो है ना डेफिनेशन पढ़ रहा था तो चले डिफाइन ही कर देते हैं इसको अच्छा कार्ड अपॉन शो कार्ड विद इन मोर देन सेवन डेज ऑफ सच नोटिस एज टू वाई द डेक्लेशन अंडर क्लास टू ऑफ द शुड नॉट बी मेड अगेंस्ट हिम इफ अ नोटिस इज इशूड अंडर दिस क्लास ऑफ प्रिजाइडिंग ऑफिसर ऑफ द कंसर्न हाउस शेल बी इन्फॉर्म्ड अकॉर्डिंगली इट इज सी सी टू द पर्सन हु इज सिटिंग इन दसेंबली बेसिक लेटर इज एड्रेस टू दन हु इज डिफेक्टेड acha a member of a house shall be deemed to be to defect from a political party if he having been elected as such as a candidate or nominee of a political party or under a symbol of political party or having been elected otherwise then as a candidate or nominee of a political party and having become a member of political party after such election by means of a declaration in writing a commits breach of party discipline which means violation of the party constitution code of conduct and declared politics b vote contrary to any direction issued by the parliamentary party to which he belongs direction usko pehle direction milni chahiye phir wo violate karega c abstain from voting in the house against party against the party policy in relation to any bill yahan pe jo pehli do condition hai puri nahi ho rahi hai डायरेक्शन की बात हो रही है ना तो देर इज नो डायरेक्शन सो फार विच हैज बीन ब्राट ऑन रिकॉर्ड दैट देर वॉज अ डायरेक्शन टू डू अ पार्टिकुलर थिंग इन अ पार्टिकुलर वे ये हो गया इस पर अगर मजीद जानना चाहते हैं तो ये जो बड़ा मशहूर केस एक ही है इस पर सिक्सटी थ्री पे वो है वकला महाज बरा तहफ दस्तूर बनाम फेडरेशन ऑफ पाकिस्तान वकला वर्सेज द फेडरेशन ऑफ पाकिस्तान पी एल डी उन्नीस सौ अठानवे सुप्रीम कोर्ट वन टू सिक्स थ्री एक ही सिक्सटी थ्री पे एक ही केस है ये वो देख लीजिएगा तो ये मेरा ख्याल नहीं है कि वो जो काम किया उन्होंने वो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनली सही था इसलिए कि उसमें ऐसा कोई नोटिस नहीं था ऐसी कोई डायरेक्शन नहीं थी एंड आफ्टर वोटिंग अगर वो जनाब एक आदमी खत लहरा दे तो कानून में बात कर रहा हूँ आप बात समझिएगा कि आई एम टाकिंग इन टर्म ऑफ सम एफिलियशन नो लेट द कोर्ट टू डिसाइड इट बट एज अ सिटीजन ऑफ अ कंट्री आई हैवर राइट टू एक्सप्रेस माई humble view regarding the little knowledge i have about the constitution to usme it is to me uh, i think uh, it was all the way illegal anything else assalam alaikum ji bhai mohammad suleiman ji sir ek general question hai aapse constitution pe ke 94 mein case aaya tha hamara al jihad trust case al jihad versus federation of pakistan एलिवेशन का सारा डिस्कस हुआ जस्टिस जाद अली शाह साहब की एलिवेशन भी हुई 94 में और 98 तक था जिस पर फिर 98 में असद अली केस आया जिसमें फुल कोर्ट सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने डिक्लेयर किया कि द एलिवेशन ऑफ 
سجاد علی شاہ واز انلیگل اینڈ انکونسٹیٹیوشنل کیونکہ وہ سپر سیٹ کے تین ججز ہو تو جنرلی سب اپ کونسٹیٹیوشنل سٹیٹس میں ایک جنرل پیسٹن ہے کہ کونسٹیٹیوشنل سٹیٹس کیا رہے گا کیا آپ ایز ای چیف جسٹس ٹرین کر سکتے ہیں کیونکہ سپریم کورٹ نے اٹسل اس کی انٹرپیٹیشن میں کہا کہ his elevation as a chief justice was illegal and unconstitutional. Now, this is what you have said. For this, to understand, we have to read the article 199 and 199. 199 says that 189 says all the courts of the country will come to the head of the Supreme Court. Article 199 says all the institutions of the country will come to the head of the Supreme Court. Now, when the Supreme Court starts to make a mistake, now, this unfortunate question, آپ نے پوچھ لیا ہے I have no hesitation to tell you کہ بڑی پرانی بات ہے ایک دفعہ ایک ہمارے چیف جسٹر صاحب تھے بڑی بار بیٹنگ کرتے تھے وہ تو ایک بڑے سینئر لائیر تھے وہ کہنے کہ یہ کیا لگایا جی آپ نے پاہا انہوں نے ان کو بھی پارا چڑ گیا ان کا تو وہ نے پیچھے پتہ نہیں کس کو ایبیوز کر کے کہا کہ میں نے کہا تھا تم ٹھیک کافی لگانا یہ اندہ ہے جا جا اندہ ہے اب یہ سارے حال میں آباد گونجی جائے تھا آپ نے بھی س He started his case, built his case and said that in this proposition, India's Calcutta High Court has not made this decision. Hyderabad High Court, Dakkan, Bombay, flam, flam, flam. He said that Sri Lanka is in Bangladesh High Court, Bangladesh Supreme Court. Then he said that Sri Lanka is in Maldives. As soon as he was not in the case, he said that you have come up with so many judgments. But you have not cited a single judgment from Pakistani High Court or the Supreme Court. He said, my lord, you are quite incapable of delivering a judgment. You are the one who has taken the oath under the different constitutions. And right from Molvi Tumizuddin case till today, you have been delivering the wrong judgments. And you have blackened your faces. And there is a dirt on your hand. Unless you clean it, how can I cite any reference uh, judgment from you? This is it. Nothing we can say. But because you have asked that the Asad Ali judgment and Al-Jihad came in 1996, PLD in 1996, the Supreme Court in 1994, Al-Jihad Trust v. Federation of Pakistan. So, who will change this? I don't understand. I will tell you one more thing. After that, I will not have a question. The judge's selection will be the way that the judge 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 will be the way एक बहुत अच्छे वकील साहब थे उनका नाम था जी शरीफ साहब तो वो जलंधर से बाहर नहीं आते थे तो एक दफ़ा उनके क्लाइंट ने कहा ये प्री पार्टीशन की बात है कि सर वो लाहौर है सर आप जो मर्जी करें अब हम क्लाइंट भी मजबूर होते हैं ना कभी कभी लाडले होते हैं हमारे क्लाइंट तो वो उन्होंने बड़ी मिन्नत की ये जिन जज साहब की मैं जिनकी बात कर रहा हूँ बाद में बताऊँगा ठे कौन वो उनको लाहौर ले आए तो उस वक्त लाहौर हाईकोर्ट के चीफ जस्टिस थे मिस्टर जस्टिस डब्ल्यू बी यंग تو وہ انہوں نے جب کیس آرکو کیا اور انہوں نے کہا جی پریوی کونسل میں یہ ہیلڈ ہوا یہ ہوا تو وہ کہنے لگے وکیل صاحب آئے میں نے آپ کو پہلے کبھی دیکھا نہیں ہے انہوں نے کہا جی میں جلندر پریکٹس کرتا ہوں تو ادھر کام ہی آتا ہوں اس نے کہا جی you are such a man کمال ہے فیصلہ تو اس نے ان کے حق میں دے دیا ٹی بریک ہوئی تو اس نے اپنے رنر کو کہا کہ جو وکیل صاحب آئے تھے ان کو بلا کے لے ہو وہ گئے تو بار میں بیٹھے ہوئے تھے وہ لے گئے تو وہ کہنے لگے کہ وکیل صاحب میں چاہتا ہوں آپ کو بینچ میں ایلیویٹ کرنا اگر آپ راضی ہوں تو تو انہیں کہا جی اگر آپ ایلیویٹ کرنا چاہتے تو مجھے کہہ اطراد ہوتا ہے ایک دفعہ کی ملاقات ہے ایک ہی دفعہ پیش ہوئے and then he was elevated in Lahore High Court اور یہ Mr. Justice Sheikh Mohamed Zubair کے والد صاحب تھے اور وسیم سجاد صاحب کے نانا تھے ایک وہ کرائیٹیریا تھا ایک آج کا کرائیٹیریا ہے تو جس طرح کا کرائیٹیریا ہے اسی طرح کے فیصلے آئیں گے اور پھر جب نظریہ ضرورت پر بحث ہو رہی تھی تو پاکستان کے بڑے معروف قانونان بہت بڑے سیاستان حسین شہی سرور تھی انہوں نے اپنے چیمبر میں پوچھا کہ آج بروئی نے کیا آرگو کیا ہے انہوں نے کہا سر بروئی نے جس نیسیسی ٹیٹس آرگو کیا ہے ڈاکٹرائن آف نیسیسی ٹی تو سرورتی صاحب کہتے ہیں کہ بروئی is a cactus which grows in the field of martial law تو this is we have a very bad history nothing let me it is a confession on my part nothing we can do لیکن وہ کسی نے کہا ہے کہ ہمیں تو کشم کشے مر کے بے اماں ہی ملی انہیں تو جھومتی گاتی ہے یاد مل جائے ہم آپ لوگوں کے لئے ٹرائی کر رہے ہیں تینکیو ویری مچ آج مارولس سر 
हाई कोर्ट बार एसोसिएशन के चैनल पे ये लेक्चर आपको मिलेगा आप जब भी चाहें इसको देख सकते हैं उसको सब्सक्राइब भी कर लीजिए और पिछले तमाम लेक्चर्स भी उसमें मौजूद हैं आपके लिए हेल्पफुल होंगे तो मैं एक दफ़ा हाई कोर्ट बार एसोसिएशन की तरफ से फिर सरदार साहब का शुक्रिया अदा करता हूँ और आप सबको चाय की तरफ